days like this make me think about Slim Jesus. I, I know that's not uh, something that you often hear from people, but I think about Slim Jesus and shortly after his drill time success, virtually every interview that he did, he revealed that he was indeed not a killer. You know, he, he's, he's not that guy. That's not his life. He's just making art. It's just a song. Very rarely do you have an artist break the fourth wall like that. And I think that was a uh, that was a seminal moment in, in hip hop. And I don't even think that that's a, uh, an intense statement. I think it really was. I don't care if he's white. He's he was a viral artist who could have told you anything at that point. He could have pretended to be anything. Uh, and it would have increased his numbers. It would have only helped his marketing. He could have said anything at that point, but he didn't. He said, no, this isn't my life. I, 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 I don't do that. You know, you take Slim Jesus and say, for example, you take somebody like Casanova two times uh, from New York City. Um, you know, knock you in your, you know, punch you in your face, motherfucker. I knock your teeth out. Um, Casanova's approach uh, with regard to his image is a bit different because Casanova is somebody who's, you know, he's been in and out of the prison system. Now, with his newfound success, what he says in his interviews is, you know, I'm pussy now. I, I don't do that stuff anymore. I don't do that anymore. He completely disarms himself, and that's a life I used to live. I'm just making art. So he has a different origin story than Slim Jesus, but they meet at the very same point at the moment of their success. You know, very passive, very that's not me. This is just art I'm creating. Pop Smoke, who you all know, uh, you know, has, has died or has been murdered um, earlier today, took a very different approach. You know, I saw a genius uh, lyrical, you know, breakdown of, of Welcome to the Party. You know, and there's lines in the song where it's, you know, it's gun references and stuff. And he's just like, you know, um, you know, I do it. You know, I got it on my hip. So <laughs> do something. You know, and it's not just that. It's just every other time I've ever heard him speak. It's always like, listen, I'm I'm about that. I'm about that. I will do this. I don't need security. I keep people around me. I got those things on me. I got this. I got that. You know. So these are three different viewpoints, you know, but two meet in the very same. They meet at the very same point and pop smoke after his success doubles down on his lyrics and says, no, that's me. That's important in hip hop because authenticity is everything. That's what everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know if you are who you say you are. Hip hop is the only art form where what you write has to reflect who you are as a person. That doesn't necessarily have to mean that what we want is thugs. We want people who are real. We want people who are who they say they are. And that's important to people and it's important for an artist to do that because it helps their brand it helps their marketing it helps you know the gang culture that they carry with them it it, it does something and after a rapper is killed conversations uh always look towards the music first you know it is a a law within the world that, you know, the words that you say out of your mouth will someday bear a consequence, whether positive or or negative. Um, I'm not sure if that even makes sense. Positive consequences. Uh, that, that, that's interesting. But, um, you know, th those words will always come back to manifest themselves, uh, you know, in your reality. And even though we know that, we still understand that music is culture and music is it, it, it's it's whimsical it's it's imaginary it's i'm whatever i say i am within this song nas told you he was a fucking gun you know um you know common told you he was in you know he was in love with her and then by the end of the song you find out you know he was in love with hip-hop you know it's it's whatever you say it is you know and after a rapper's death, that's the very first level of conversation. You know, it's like, well, hey, look, this is the music that they put out. But 
I've I've wavered on this through the years. Like I've gone back and forth uh, uh, about this because that's that's a very dangerous that's a ve- very dangerous path to go down. You know because you know what does that do for culture? What does that do for culture as a whole if we can't have fun? If we can't say what we want to say? If you if you can't grab a piece of paper and say that I kill twenty people, you know, meet me at the party. I know that's not the that, that's not the lyric, but you get what I mean. Meet me at the party. I got a clip. You know, if you can't write that down on a piece of paper, you shouldn't be able to write. I believe I can fly. You should. That's my argument. You you can't. If you can't if you can't say I killed twenty people. If you, Johnny Cash says, you know, I killed a man in Reno or whatever. If you, if Johnny Cash can't say that, then R. Kelly can't say, I believe I can fly. There are many things that R. Kelly shouldn't be able to say, <laughs> but I believe I can fly shouldn't be one of them. So I don't think we can put a stranglehold on um, on speech like that as far as music and sort of try to protect the culture and say that, you know, this is the reason why. I don't think so. Um, even though these may be you know, facts, you know, if you want to put our pseudo spiritual heads, uh, pseudo spiritual hats on and say that, you know, if you write this in a song, then you are bringing it to yourself cosmically in some way, shape or form, even though that may be a fact, music still has to be protected. Culture still has to be protected. And we can't save a couple, um, you know, we, we can't attempt to save a couple hundred lives Um, if it means we're not going to be able to enhance the, you know, the generations ahead with, you know, what can be done imaginatively, uh, on a record. So even though that's the first place people go, I say no. Um, so what pop smoke says in his music is what he says in his music and that's his art and that's completely separate. However, the stupid things that he did on social media are the practical reasons of uh why he met his demise um you know facts like uh putting out his his address of the 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 airbnb you know whether it was by accident or or not it's just an unfortunate set of of circumstances an unfortunate um situation that this 20 year old man uh you know lost his life when he had just gotten a a piece of success and you know it's it's a theme that's becoming a way too common in hip-hop and of course you know with the death of nipsey hustle last year you know you you saw the, the you know the world saw the death of a good man that's what i really think you lost with nipsey i don't you know there was all this stuff about it you know whether he's a legend and you know people like well you know posthumously you know now that he's gotten this success it shouldn't really count he's not on that level he's not on some mount i don't care about any of that because personally i didn't um I didn't listen to uh, Nipsey's music heavy when he was alive, so I can't really speak to that. Um, but I will say that you you had somebody murdered who was a good man, somebody who was able to give wisdom, uh, somebody that had an entre- uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, he had a lot of value. So um, you saw the death of a good man in front of his business in his neighborhood. It was just so it felt so local. It felt so communal, you know. Um, So that was, you know, that was the death of Nipsey Hussle. It was really um, a man's character. A man with a certain level of character was taken away and no one questions his character. I think. When an artist dies and there's one aspect of them that nobody wavers on and that nobody questions, I think that is their point of impact. That's their point of impact. Um, Pharaoh Monch dies tomorrow. Uh, his lyricism is what everybody's going to do. It's a man, such a great, such a great lyricist. Just a great lyricist, a lyricist, a lyricist. Like that's all anybody's going to say about Pharaoh Monch. Nipsey Hussle dies and it's just like it's his character, his, you know, his mind. It's 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 a different conversation, uh, you know, with Nipsey. You know, Kobe Bryant dies and everybody's just like, you know, th- th- there's like this excessive... Um, conversation about just like achievement and and you know what kobe achieved and you know what his mentality was and 
Kobe's the closest thing we've ever had, you know, to, to a cyborg, you know, because he speaks a certain way and he does certain things. So that really makes you question, you know, what's in his head. Uh, and of course, you know, all that Mamba mentality stuff. So th what everybody sort of agrees on uh, with you in particular, when you are shot and when you are killed tragically in a helicopter accident, that's what everybody sort of just like really pedals out there. You know, with Pop Smoke, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was other than successful and young. He's he's not loved. You know, it wasn't like X. X had uh, candid conversations that he had with his audience. He had lots of ups and downs that he uh, documented himself and he spoke a lot about. Um, you know, like Pop Smoke, you, you can find uh, videos of X having fights online. Pop Smoke, of course, uh, you know, I found out earlier today that he had gotten himself into an altercation <clears throat> late last year where he got revenge on some guy who had, uh, you know, slapped him a couple years prior. So he found this guy at a 7-Eleven and he jumped him with a few friends on camera. And look, that's what matters. Not what you say on a record. It's what you do there. That is what where your consequences come from. And that's why I don't do this whole, you know, I'm not I'm not saying this whole R.I.P. thing for, for Pop Smoke. I'm not, you know, it seems like there was, you know, there's sort of a death wish there. You know, there's kind of a death wish there. It's it's the it's the infinite uh, invincibility of uh, of youth and how youth just feels like they youth is untouchable. Youth is youth has dominion over the present and everything exists for the youth uh therefore we are gods and we can do whatever the fuck we want and and have no consequences and you know then things like that happen and you know this is all about keeping a, a certain uh type of, uh, of of person around you you know keeping people around you that uh you know are, are looking out for you that uh protect you that know your value because i i know that there's an entourage today that is uh you know ups is iron you know that they're considering that now because you know their meal ticket is uh you know is gone and uh you know that's what happens when you don't protect uh, the crown jewel when you don't protect the investment so you know out of sheer stupidity pop smoke is uh is no longer with us and i didn't make a nipsey hustle video i didn't make a nipsey hustle video because at that point after you saw his death it's just what else is there to say man you know what else is there to say you know this kid got killed it's not good you wouldn't want your little brother you wouldn't want your son uh you wouldn't want anybody that you know uh to have that level of success and to carry themselves like that and uh you know and have this tragic thing happen <sighs> but i want to move on from that you of course are listening to the d dot podcast of course i'm about a. uh, uh 13 minutes in and now i say that in the description below of course we have a uh, rap runner episode four it's in the description below my brand new series that uh merges rap with running it's a lot of fun please check it out and also like this video those of you who liked the video last week that is uh, always greatly appreciated um i want to get off the subject of death really because that's it man w what are you gonna say the kids the kids dead um what i'm more interested about rather is uh you know, is, is this news of of uh, Dwayne Wade and his son, uh, Dwayne Wade, who you all know, uh, you know, ha a future Hall of Famer, um, what, two, three time NBA champion. Dwayne Wade's son has uh, come out as trans or, or he, he's come out as a girl. He was born a boy and uh, he's he's now a girl. And Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union are in full support of of their son, you know, as they should be. So you have a lot of people react. Excuse me. You have a lot of people reacting to it. Uh, you have little Boosie who made a very, uh, very uh, emotional uh, video just a couple of days ago, you know, saying, uh, hey, Kobe, man, don't don't cut the kid's dick off, man. Don't don't cut his dick. Hey, don't do it, man. Y you wildin', man. You just need to listen to the D-Dot podcast. That's really what you need to do. Boosie actually said that. You should go back and check out the video. Boosie actually said that about my podcast. No lie. 
Um, so little, you know, little, little Uzi. Uh, so little Boosie, you know, discusses his um his contempt for uh for for Dwayne Wade, and you know, in his rant, uh, he does clarify, which many of us have to clarify as well, is. You know, if you're going to let him be gay, let him be gay. You know, this has nothing to do with uh, with uh, sexual preference. You know, when when you're discussing the trans stuff, it's it doesn't always deal with gay or or whatever, uh, because, you know, the kid can, you know, consider himself a girl and still have his penis. And, you know, uh, technically, I guess, you know, he can be with uh, with another man and then he he could say oh, that well i am a girl so that means i'm not gay it all depends on how people look you know this is a very 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 complicated thing i you know i see a lot of people like they're upset that Dwayne wade is like literally calling his son a she you know and they're like you know how could you but it's like you know pronouns in this in this community are everything you know and and whoever's interviewed Dwayne wade has made it their business to say she you know they are not calling his son a he anymore it's a it's a she but um you know, um, you know, Boosie, uh, you know, understands that this isn't, you know, it's not so much about his sexuality. But what's not understood is, is the thought of, hey, the kid is trans, so all of a sudden he's going to cut his dick off. I don't think there's been any discussion of that whatsoever. I don't think Dwayne Wade has divulged that sort of information where it's like, yeah, and my son's going to cut his dick off. The kid's just saying, I'm a girl, you know, I I I'm a girl. And look, that's a direction uh, th this country's, uh, going in, you know, that's the direction it's going in. It's going in a very liberal. Um, and when I mean liberal, I don't mean, uh, political persuasion. I mean, liberal in the sense of just progressive and just, uh, social relativism, you know, it's just, everyone is equal. If you have a cause uh yeah sure man yeah you are what you say you are next person comes up i'm a unicorn yeah man yeah 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 you are what you say you are this is the direction that the country is moving into and what i could at least see on Dwayne wade's face uh i can kind of see this feeling of i don't understand it but i love my son and that's totally understandable um, you know, me uh, becoming a father about a, about a month ago, you know, it's way too early for me to understand it on that level because my child can't even talk yet. But um, but I can understand like the acceptance of your child. It's like, yeah, I, I support my child. That part of it, I understand. I also do understand that Dwayne Wade's probably been extremely busy during the formative years of his son's life. Think about Dwayne Wade and how busy he's been traveling the world, traveling the U.S., you know, uh, you, know you know, with all his, uh, you know, his all his business dealings and obviously playing in the NBA. Did that have some effect on uh, his child's development, you know, turning out the way that he did? And and now this happened, uh, you know, I don't you know, I, I don't doubt that Gabriel Union, you know, being the. Um, you know, being the, 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 the actress that she is, she's probably been in a lot of very liberal circles her whole entire life. Everything to her is just like, yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Live and let live, live and let live. And this is the danger. This is the, <laughs> this is the danger of progressivism. You know, th this is the danger of it. And, you know, it, and it's a danger because we can all agree that um, you know, just like we mentioned before, why is it that it takes Pop Smoke's success takes him having to be a killer, having to be a thug, you know, Denzel winning an Oscar. He had to be a thug. Why Denzel had to be crooked before he took it. Thank you, Jada. Thank you for that uh, interesting insight. Why is that? Well, because, you know, the media and, and TV has always had, a you know, an interest in, in projecting a certain uh, image of, of people of color. And with that understanding, there is a sense of it's it has a touch of genocide to it. It has a touch of a suggestive genocide, at least like, hey, you guys kill each other anyway. Why don't you just keep killing each other? So. If you think of it from from an aspect of procreation, 
if you think of it from an aspect of of having children and populations and making babies and Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Party, then that's where the danger comes in for us with you know Dwayne Wade and all of this you know his child could be the greatest kid in the world but what's definitely a fact is he's a lot less likely to have his own baby you know he'll adopt I'm pretty sure he'll be financially well off no matter what he does he'll always be supported uh, by his mother and his father but he's a lot less likely to have a child in the traditional way because you know whatever happens at the end of this this sexual maze this this discovery and then you know by the time he's 25 he's just like no 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm a dude now you know whatever happens he's a lot less likely to to uh make a baby with a woman so that's the danger the danger is in the pattern it's in the pattern of that's how you're showing young black boys that's what they are they are effeminate um you know they're you know they're dainty you know they're little nas x they're you know but look by the way look i'm sorry i'm sorry guys little nas x and nas no no Let, let's not do that ever again i don't give a fuck how many records he streams there's certain things that you can't change you know there's certain things that that cannot be changed and you can't change somebody somebody's level of 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 legend nas is legendary you know and to be quite honest with you i'm almost disappointed in nas showing up on that track himself i'm disappointed that nas did that and it's not for the reasons that that you you know that you feel it's not because little nas x is gay i don't give a fuck about any of that no one does by the way no one cares that little nas x is gay no one cares that he's gay because a rapper's sexual orientation doesn't have anything to do with with them. And plus, on that song, if you listen, Little Nas X is still writing towards a woman. So these people are they're subverting so many things at once, you know, because they tell you that he's gay. And now on, on every song, he's still like, girl, this and girl, that. And I don't care about his sexuality. It's just the fact that. Nas is on a song with him just because he streamed a lot of just because he gained a lot of streams. That's the only reason why. And because his name is Nas, uh, little little Nas X. Nas in my opinion. Um and of course this doesn't have to be your opinion, so please don't be offended. Why well, you can be offended, doesn't matter. Um Coming from a Nas fan from from way back when, Nas's le- legendary status takes a bit of a hit because it, it, it's a cash grab. You know, it's it's a quick little it's a quick little grab. You know, I could never see Jay Z doing this. I could never see Jay Z doing this. I, I just can't. I I can't see Jay Z uh, jumping on a record with somebody just because they have one gargantuan hit. And if he ever did, it's always a record where it meshes well. If you're going to make a record with Little Nas X, why not have it be a Nas record where Little Nas is on the hook? That would have worked to me. And I think that would probably be a good track. But when you take this like this thriller approach to whatever the fuck it was, and then you try to like wedge in a Nas verse and try to have it all make sense, it just it doesn't mix it's you know it's cereal and sauerkraut like i don't want it you know i like both of those things separately but together it's a it's it's a mess um so Nas's legendary status kind of takes a bit of a hit you know i don't i don't pretend to know the 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 the, the label workings and, and and you know and all that shit i'm you know i'm not the i'm not an industry head you know i'm not i'm not a guy that's ever sat in boardrooms and knows like tactics that labels do or whatever the fuck um you know so i don't know what forced nas to do it <laughs> i can only assume that he was forced to do it you know i can only assume that it was uh it was kind of like suge knight in uh in the all eyes on me movie uh when he force fed that guy when Pac was sitting across from him. like i i could only assume that there's some record exec out there uh, at a dinner table with Nas and then he gets up Nino Brown style, like, you know, don't all speak at once. Uh, and then he um, 
you know, then he just force feeds Nas until he just like submits and says, yes, I will collab with 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 uh, little Nas X. I don't know why he's on that song. I, 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 I seriously cannot imagine that he's listening to that song saying I want to be on that record. I just think it was just an opportunistic thing. I guess try to take advantage of the kid and you know his uh his his uh his success i'm i'm pretty sure that the streaming numbers to those songs are crazy and and nas is getting a lot of financial uh benefit off of it but i i i remember nas i remember nas when he was nas i remember nas even when he was nas and he didn't put out albums that were nas albums you know this, this is when it really hurts, when you had to sit around and justify to people when you fucking, when Nas put out songs like Nostradamus. <laughs> I defended him. I defended him when he put out that fucking song and that album, to be quite honest with you. Uh, and, you know, and one or two other horrible albums that, you know, just... And and this is this is a, sh a shot against it. It, it. It's a shot against it. It may not be to you, but it but it certainly is to me. But you know that was a a, a complete uh, detour. But uh, back on the subject of uh, of the trans stuff and and Dwayne Wade, this is just the direction where the country is going. And this is something that I've spoken to you about uh, many times. You know, and what's scary to me is is in order to in order to have some influence in order to have some influence you have to appease advertisers in order to have a big media brand you have to play ball with advertisers i'm not talking about at a youtube level i'm just talking about uh, you know being hired by some other entity or you know any other situation if if a if a story about trans things comes across your desk, you have to play ball. You can't be very honest and say that I don't fucking agree with this lifestyle. I have a kid. I don't, you know, which everybody's still w well within their right to say. But since everybody's taken this sort of, you know, Silicon Valley, uh, progressive, you know, woke Twitter direction, it seems to me that in the future, if you want any bit of media influence at all, you're gonna have to speak about these subjects in a very light manner you know it's like michael jordan's i don't know niece comes out as trans you know in like five years or something and michael jordan's like i'm in support of my niece and you're just gonna like oh you know it's michael jordan man and it's his niece man he he you know he he, he, he loves his niece and, you know because you don't want to get canceled because you don't want to you know and it, it's just amazing how the world has just made everyone submit you know, uh, this is this is the, you know, the, the 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 war on language has has bit itself in the ass. Um, and this is a political statement. The the left and uh, now I mean liberals in a, you know, in, in a political sort of way. This is the consequence of all of that. This is the consequence of of watching speech and uh demonizing speech this is what happens now now you will see how it will affect even commentators and has affected commentators but will only get worse and worse and worse and what's crazy is that news just keeps on getting more more erratic and more random and then you just kind of go like this just happened today i guess and what are you gonna do about it you know, what are you going to do about it when everyone is offensive? What are you going to do about it when everyone speaks too soon or is way too critical about something that's so serious to everyone else? And now all of a sudden you can't dissect it. And the minute that you do dissect it just a little too early, then that's it. You're you're, you're canceled. And, and, and it'll get to the point where it's not even about apologies anymore. <laughs> they, they, they just won't care. You just have to. You, you are almost being forced to submit and accept the world as it is. And your opinion and your feeling is but a minor inconvenience and you will be eaten. That's the message that's, that's meeting you at your doorstep. If you are somebody who cares about speech. If you're somebody who cares about protecting, protecting a traditional look at family you know, a traditional look at family of 
no, I'm not okay with my 10 year old telling me that, that he's a boy, you know, because my 10 year old can't make crucial decisions and, and shit, if I was, you know, if I was Dwayne Wade, maybe I would chalk it up to the fact that I was busy all the time. And it's like, okay, look, you can call yourself a girl, you know, and I know that's offensive to people get fucking over it. You know, um, you can call yourself a girl. You know, and I have to explain this to other people too. I have to explain this to people that maybe aren't quite, uh, you know, up on the trans stuff. Even if you say something as subtle as you can call yourself a girl, right? Imagine if you're sitting in front of Dwayne Wade's son and you're like, uh, what's his name? Zion or something like that. I think he changed his name to Zia. Zia, you can call yourself a girl if you want. Zia is always well within his right to kind of go, <laughs> I can call myself because then it, you know, it, it, it starts all these different nuanced conversations about I'm not calling myself this. I am this. It's offensive to say that I can call myself this as if I'm making it up. And it's it's a it's a conversation that goes around in circles and it's and it's very, very complex. And, um, you know, I would tell my you know, I would tell the kid you can call yourself that. But don't do anything drastic that you're going to regret in the future. So make that a slow process, you know, if that's something that you that you want to go and do. But schools today are pushing kids towards that. They're, they're pushing kids towards saying things like I'm a girl. I think there's um, what was it? I think it was like late last year or third quarter last year. There was news about a a couple uh a married couple that had gone to court about a son who wanted to be recognized as a girl and his father fought against it and eventually uh the mother won the mother of course was in support of the child and the kid uh, you know the father was taken to court and now the son can go along with his sex change procedures uh i believe that kid did and the mother did have plans to actually remove the kid's genitals so children are going to do well the younger the child is that's the interesting part the younger the child is they will do anything they can to appease the mother you know especially boys um boys will do everything to appease their mother because their mother is you know their mother's everything and you know you're living in a world where you know you're the son of a you know of a of a, of a famous basketball player a famous uh, uh, actress and, you know, you're 12 years old and, you know, seems like a very smart kid. Um, the world is pushing you towards being that, you know, and uh, and a lot of trans people, a lot of uh, queer people, they, they do like to argue that. Well, look, heteronormative people uh, are just victims of how society was set up and the the binary of of light blue and pink and girl and boy and, and penis and vagina and uh you know a basketball and a, and a doll um you know they would say that we're victims of a binary and we are just heterosexual because that's the way society is constructed well what seems to be taking place now well it seems like society is now constructing you to be more of that you know not exactly i wouldn't say instructing you to because you know that would be that would just be just straight up genocide that <laughs> that would just be straight up like the extinction of humanity as we know it just if if like the government if like trump just went up there is like i want all of you to come out as trans that was more that was more uh B bernie sanders let, 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 let's try let's try more trump I, I'll, I'll try more trump I, I want you to come out as trans. Uh, is that Mayor Quimby from The Simpsons? God, I'm I'm off my game. It's like it's like it's like 10:42 right now. Forgive me. Uh, I'll get on my game next time. But the the world is is pushing you towards it. You know, it's you're leaning towards it. And if you're Dwayne Wade's son, and this is your life, and it's like, mom, dad, I'm I'm a girl. You know, a lot of attention goes into that. Kids love attention. Kids love uh you know the affirmation that they're good and 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 that they're uh that they're pleasing their parents you know it's 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 the reason why you know 
you know, kids go to college and, and you know, and, and pursue uh, careers that their parents would like them to. And, you know, and, and they, you know, and, and they think they have no say in the met. You know, that's, that's what happens to a lot of immigrant children, a lot of uh, second generation immigrant children. They come here, you know, Indian kids and Chinese kids. And it's just like, you know, that's it. That You have to be a doctor. You just have to be. It's it's kind of the same thing, you know, how they're being conditioned now, how kids are being conditioned in, in this country to sort of just convince themselves that they're everything other than what they are, you know. Um, um, so that didn't happen as a kid. Um, as a kid, you know, I, I wasn't sitting around thinking about my sexuality. Like, that's that's a serious argument to be had about the sexualization of these kids. I saw... Dwayne Wade's son in a float uh, last summer. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> at the parade. I saw a video of it where he's, you know, he's he's in the float and he's with, a, with with a gay guy, just like standing right next to him. And the gay guy's like dressed like in underwear and shit. And it's like, why is that 12 year old boy standing next to that grown man? Like, this is very, very fucking sexual. You know, it, it does. It does seem like it's, you know, it's grooming. It, it does seem like it's grooming. And and that's disgusting because when I was that age, I didn't, you know, I, I, when I was that age, no, sex just wasn't on my mind. When I was, when I was that age, it was just, it was just sports, uh, video games. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, sports, video games, and not wanting to go to school. <laughs> that's pretty much, that, that was pretty much my life. It wasn't, you know, you weren't like reminded constantly about your sexuality and have to consider your sexuality. I mean, you can only imagine, you know, how many people, you know, would have been confused back in the day if society would have been pushing you towards that. So the trans person with the argument of, you know, this is the, and that's not a straw man, by the way. That is not a straw man argument. That is a legitimate argument that the trans community makes. It, it, it's it's sort of a counteraction to the, you know, the mental illness uh, argument that heteronormative people have that, you know, they say that, you know, this is uh, you, you're having some form of um, uh, I don't know if the proper term is body dysmorphia or, or something. You have some level of, of psychosis where you're confused uh, and you think you're trans where and trans people say, well, society has casted down the system of of heterosexuality and through movies through everything you yourself have been confused so that's its own form of mental illness so that's not a, that's not a straw man this is this is real stuff so what you begin to see is that people people don't hate authority they don't hate authority they don't hate the patriarchy they don't hate that they hate systems that don't support what they would like to happen. That's what it really is. That's what it really is because move forward into the future and know that all this stuff is going to intensify and you're not going to have a lot of trans people coming out and saying, we don't like how the, the world is forcing people to become trans. No, they'd love it. They're like, yes, yes, we want more. We want more people. So then so then you kind of find out <laughs> what this is all about. You know, it's all about power. It's all about influence. It's all about justifying your choices um, because you feel insecure about your choices. So you want everyone to feel the same way as you. Um and, and I disagree with that, you know, uh, do I think that society has has forced people to to be uh, to be a certain way? Uh, no, I think biology, uh, you know, also plays its its part in it as well. It's not just a social construct, man. It's a chemical thing. It's a chemical thing between a woman and a man. And I, you know, and remember, again, uh, again, we're not discussing sexuality. We're discussing how you perceive yourself in the world, uh, why you perceive yourself as a man, why you perceive yourself as a woman. You know, I'm not even a person who's, you know, who's really qualified or even that invested to discuss these things. But I do think that it's a complex issue and it needs to be dissected, um, especially when we're talking about children. You know, they're coming for your kids now, man. They're coming for your kids and they're, they're even doing it to alpha males, you know. They're even doing it to uh, to athletes. Now, athletes are are supposed to be open and we just wanted her to live her truth. You know, the world is so feminine. It's a, it's such a feminine world. And um, there's something great about that. But there's you know, there's a misunderstanding that goes along with that as well. You know, there's the 
the attack on masculinity that's been, you know, quite obvious over the years. You know, you've even had brands like Gillette uh, taking aim at, at masculinity because, you know, it's just it's it's feminine energy. But some of it is like toxic feminine energy. That's it's not like we can do everything a man can do. It's no, we're just as good as men or we're better than men or we don't need men or we hate men or, or whatever it is. So now that a child is being, you know, persuaded to to not be masculine, what does that mean for men of the future? Who knows? Who knows? You know, I can only I can only watch and I can only uh I can only really pay attention to what goes on in my own household. Uh, but I can only imagine what happens at, at, for, you know, from a societal standpoint. You know, if, uh, for example, if Little Nas X isn't just uh, an anomaly, if Little Nas X is really just the beginning of, of something else, uh, which is just a, you know, a an army of, of younger artists who come in and they lead with their sexuality. And next time it's it's going to be somebody who throws it in the lyrics and, you know, is very flamboyant. Uh Something like that. I don't really, I don't really foresee that at least in the near future. But it's definitely, definitely a possibility. Like just, just imagine somebody who's just as obnoxious as Lizzo. Can you just imagine that? Like some like twenty four year old shit, and you know he's like so proud of himself, and he's just always on Instagram, and he's just like, I'm me, bitch. I'm me. I do what I want, bitch. And and everybody just has to accept him because he just streamed the hundred million fucking songs last week like and of course nothing uh nothing against lizzo i have i have nothing against uh big women but um that's the direction we're headed into folks um i'm sorry to tell you that uh it is the current situation that we are in and uh as creators as commentators our job is to say how we personally feel say how we personally feel about it but not just rejecting it like boosie not just saying hey fuck that man fuck nigga don't nigga don't cut his dick off like that's just you know that's just a uh, fear mongering that's all it really is that's that's the sky is burning it's despair and that's not what's happening it's not the the, the building isn't burning it's just this makes you this forces you rather to have more of this forces you to focus more on your personal life. Look over your personal life and, you know, and take take inventory of it and check and see if you are exhibiting any characteristics of the people that you're seeing in your news cycle that these things are happening to. Whether that be a pop smoke, whether that be a Dwayne Wade. It doesn't matter. You just have to take more stock stock into what you're doing personally. And that's really all that you can can do. Right. You know, by the way, I also wanted to talk about uh, Quentin Miller. Um, Quentin Miller, who. You know, did, did a video the other day uh, on the five year anniversary of if you're reading this and Quentin Miller you know, was discussing his, um, you know, the, the bitter taste that was in his mouth, uh, after the, uh, the Drake and Meek situation, after Meek had outed him, uh, you know, jumped him and, you know, got his name into a whole bunch of mess and, and he revealed him as a ghostwriter and, and, uh, Quentin, of course, expressing that his life hasn't, hasn't worked out since. And, that's not a great memory, even though it's, you know, it's, it's a, one of the greatest things he's ever accomplished. And I was interested in it because ghostwriters always have this, you know, back to images, I guess. Ghostwriters always have this sort of image of, oh, it, it doesn't matter because every, everybody's calling me. Everybody's calling me. Like, I, I just, you know, I, I'm just going to keep, you know, penning hits for people. You know, because that's always the benefit that a ghostwriter has. It's like, we don't know. We, we don't know what you do. You know, each individual artist doesn't know what you do for another artist because that's not something that people talk about out in the open. You know, if if Quentin Miller would have said like, well, it doesn't matter because I'm like writing for like five of your favorite artists right now. 
then it's like, well, who is it? Well, who knows? Because nobody's going to disclose that kind of information. That's what made Meek the whistleblower that he was. That's what made that such a big deal and such a, you know, such an important uh, um, moment in hip hop. Uh, but Quentin just kind of just, you know, seriously just goes like, hey, man, somebody take a chance on me, man. I'm not I'm not getting any work out here. And it's just, you know, it's just very real. It's very regular. And I'm I'm really surprised that he would do that. You know, it's almost like Quentin Miller is is an example to me of somebody who maybe doesn't realize that he's not. He's in the wrong industry. He's in the wrong industry because he's he's too he's too much of a real person. You know, he's too much of just a regular person. Like, I think anybody else in that situation would have at least tried to sell themselves and and say, like, look, my stock hasn't dropped. You know, it's been the five year anniversary, but we're still out here. We're still working. And, you know, you know, then maybe think that somebody would see that and contact him and, you know, do some business with him. But it's just this straight up like, no, I'm not getting any work. And, you know. I'm working at Target. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's like maybe this industry is not for you. It's just and it's not even like a negative thing. It's just maybe you're just too good for it. You know, you're, you're too good for the. For how phony it is, you know, it, it's it, it, he has an honest face. It's like, what what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to be, you know, Quentin Miller, the, you know, the famous rapper like that's not going to happen. That's that ship is sailed. Uh, if what he's saying is I can write verses for people, somebody take a chance. I don't think that's what he meant. I think that's what he should have said. You know, I think you should just be what people already perceive you to be, which is the ghostwriter. And when people heard the reference tracks, uh, when they heard the reference tracks uh, to, to the Drake songs and Drake had enhanced them as much as he did, that was kind of Quentin's chance to put his best foot forward and to show people like, I don't just write hits, but I'm able to I'm, I'm able to perform them as well. And he wasn't able to demonstrate that because the songs are boring as fuck. You know, if, if Quentin Miller put out a project right now, you know, would I, you know, would I rush to stream it? No, I wouldn't. But I'm sure there would be, you know, a couple thousand people that would. I think a lot of people would line up to buy a Quentin Miller project. So I don't know why he's like wasting his time and saying like, hey, man, somebody take a, a chance on me i'm like well dude it's been five years you don't have like you didn't like anticipate this like i would it, it listen, listen it, it would have been great if like Whit miller would have like you know been calculated enough to like say well on the fifth year anniversary or you know maybe late last year saying you know when when the anniversary comes up early 2020 i'm gonna put out a six track ep where i'm just gonna dismeek um, because he dissed him anyway. He called him Meek Mandela. Uh, I don't think he's into burning any bridges with Drake. Uh, so he wasn't going to diss him. You know, diss Meek, put out some songs that I know are quality. They're Drake-esque at the very least. You know, it's not like it's not like a Drake listener is going to listen to a, a Quentin Miller project and say like, oh, this sounds too much like Drake. Well, no shit it does, right? You know, the man is, is responsible for some of Drake's sound. Not all of it. You know, because we all know like 10 or 15 people are responsible for that. But so what? You know, they're not going to be picky. You could have done the same thing. You could have just, you know, done some phony Drake song. And all of a sudden your streams are just like way up there. Like, I, I don't understand why 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 Quentin did that. I, I don't understand why he just like just straight up just said like, hey, man, I'm not getting any work, man. So 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 take a take a chance on me. You know, Jay Electronica also. Uh, announced that he would be putting out a record in about uh, in 40 days. I think it was about a week ago. So maybe in a month's time, we're going to get a J Electronica uh, album. It was also rumored that uh, he's he's going to do sort of a watch the throne thing with Jay-Z. And um, I'd love to hear that. You know, I can't complain. I'm not going to complain about any J Electronica music because I've been waiting for J Electronica music for several years now as most of you have been as well and i'll accept it with open arms i'll accept it with open arms i'm just i'm just not in this fucking culture of just like where have you been where have you been we've needed you and you look if the guy puts out quality quality music after being gone for like five six years i don't give a fuck if he was out there fucking the rothschilds you know fucking 
I don't know, f- fucking Queen Elizabeth. I don't care. I, I, I just, I just don't care. I, 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 you know, I've seen, I've seen Jay Electronica, you know, have sit downs. I saw him have a, have a sit down with Red Bull, um, which those, those Red Bull, uh, sit downs are, are very uncomfortable, by the way. Uh, any of you get a chance, you know, after this podcast, if you just, if you just have just time to just, uh, you know, just bullshit around, um, after you finish with this, man, uh, they, there are a series of Red Bull interviews of of an MF Doom, of Jay Electronica, of um, Mad Lib. Uh, you know, they're conducted. They're conducted. You know, in a, you know, with a studio audience, and you know, they've got the host there. But there's always this uncomfortable thing that the Red Bull interviews do, where they sort of they play music in front of the artists so you know the dude that's interviewing them he's just like yeah man so th- there's this record called all caps uh that you made a couple years ago and then the crowd goes like ah, you know and then mf doom is just sitting there with his mask <laughs> then, then they start playing all caps and you've got to like you know you got to listen to to the uh to the cartoony mf doom uh interludes before he gets to the music which i don't give a fuck what you say i will fight any of you right right now my, my fists are up and i'm and i'm crouched and ready to attack i got a mean left hook i will fight anyone i don't ever want to go to an mf doom concert i don't at an mf doom concert all you're gonna see is a bunch of hoodies and birkenstocks just a bunch of white guys just standing around just awkwardly throwing their hands up <laughs> you know i don't want any parts of that like i'll listen to some mf doom songs but i will never go to an mf doom concert if he is at a festival then that's all good and well but i just even if i smoke even if i drink it's just not gonna put me in this sort of mood where i just want to like nah it's just it's just not for me but anyway um uh, Jay Electronica was a part of one of these Red Bull interviews, and if you if you watch this thing, you really get a sense of of Jay Electronica's personality, and you know, and sort of the introvert creator that he is. And when you're that kind of person, there is no telling how long a person like that will obsess or just ruminate about one particular thing when it comes to their craft you know i don't think jay electronica is you know he's not a person that sits down and obsesses about his music constantly he's not eminem uh i don't i don't think he's that type but i do think that he is he he's a little offbeat you know looks like he suffers from social anxiety you know he stutters he's not you know he's not very orally gifted you know funny enough he's not much of a speaker um, you know, Jay Electronica really feels like somebody who has wisdom. You know, he's not necessarily smart, but he has he has wisdom. And in that interview, you can, you know, you can really get a sense of who he is. And and when he gives you news of, hey, I'm, I'm putting out an album in, in 30 days, I'm just ready for whatever. I'm I'm ready for whatever happens because it's not like musically anyone else is doing anything. You know, did I miss something? I don't care about Lil Wayne's album. I don't care about Eminem's album. I don't care about Little Smoke Perp. I don't care about... I don't even care about Pop Smoke's new release. uh, I think he's releasing something soon. Um, uh, Or his estate, rather, uh, is releasing something soon. Uh, I don't care about any of that. I'm I'm really looking forward to Jay Electronica album. You know, unapologetically just just anticipating that. Just, Just anticipating whatever it is that 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 he has to say and um because as i said i'm just i'm just not a part of this culture of where have you been where have you been like this this new generation just does not they just don't understand the you know the the blood sucking nature of content (laughs) and you know it's just it just has a blood sucking nature to it and just just audiences themselves like they just want you know they they want parts of these artists they just they, they want everything uh you know from these artists not even parts you know so people are going to be upset at that so if it's anything other than spectacular then it's like well you know why'd you even show up in the first place you know and then what does jay electronica do does he come out with an album and then you know he's got some steam going and then all of a sudden he starts putting out sub 
car projects of songs that you know he did you know on a whim two three years ago like that's not going to be good enough either I don't, I don't want jay electronica to turn into one of these industry people that just keep putting out songs just because they're hot and it's just all hot trash i don't, I don't want that I, I i want quality if you take five years to put out an album then so be it uh i don't need new music to carry me out uh <laughs> every every day um i'm pretty much good with the old music that's that's in my playlist and you know the occasional good record that gets put out uh in real time now so it's okay take your time uh come out with it in the summertime if it's if it's taken this long because there was a lot of anticipation uh building up uh you know for exhibit c and you know and all and all the exhibit songs um and uh it's it's uh, it's it's greatly anticipated and if it's especially if it's with jay-z then that 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 could be very very interesting you know even though i'd rather hear jay-z and kanye so thank you for listening to the d-dot podcast please like the video because it helps the podcast out so very much and rap runner 4 is in the description below thank you